Touch Crisp. Yes. It is Friday again. Research Friday? Research Friday. Yes. As always, you'll have the opportunity to check out the link below. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about something we've always mentioned in the past, and we've had a few discussions in the past, mm -hmm. and it's really how can we help those patients who are suffering from SI joint pain. Which is, if you've ever had SI joint pain, you don't ever want to have SI joint pain again. Yeah, no, it's not fun for the patients. No. Um, it's sometimes not fun for the provider because they've got to figure out how do they manage this when certain things will actually exacerbate it. And yes. so the actual topic today is the relation between the transverse abdominus muscles, SI joint mechanics, and low back pain. That is a lot of stuff in a, in a title. Yeah, it is, and it's interesting they included a few other areas with that. Yes, they did. AKA low back. Yes. Um, but I was sifting through looking at this and contemplating some of the SI joint cases that I've seen in the past mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. figuring out, man, did I manage those the best I could in terms of rehab, um, knowing a few of these things that will help it out. And so Absolutely. more specifically, they're talking about what acts on the actual SI joint, what structures mm -hmm. act on that mm -hmm. joint. Because a lot of times with SI joint pain, a lot of people are like, oh, I just need to do crunches, I need to just do belly pull-ins, or um, I just need to do some glute yeah, stability little stuff, squeezes. little squeezes. Um, and this kind of yeah. doesn't say do that, but, it all, but what they suggest is super simple and super easy. Yeah. I mean, I remember going through, obviously, our chiropractic training. Mm -hmm. It was you need to mobilize that joint. Oh, yeah. Um, or the sacrum. Yeah. And I wonder how often were we dealing with a little bit of laxity, not instability. Yep. I mean, the joint mm -hmm. is pretty secure mm -hmm. as itself, mm -hmm. but we were dealing with laxity and we're prescribing sometimes mobilization to something that actually needs stabilization. Yes. And the question is when you stabilize that area, sometimes the stability is focused on the lumbopelvic area, the pelvis area, when we actually need to go. A little bit more north. Yes, exactly. I, I completely agree. So what what was the uh, simple way they were talking about how to fix this issue? They were talking about addressing the transverse abdominis. I mean, yes, that's the title of the article, but yeah. they're really talking about, and the reason why is, is I don't have my fancy diagram, but I mean, if we've had our SI joint, 45 degree angle, the mm -hmm. transverse abdominis works directly in relation to that. Yes, it does. And so it acts as a way of tightening that down. So like, with a the screw, abdominal wall. like it kind of screws it yeah, and it sticks the, it back together. Exactly, it said the abdominal wall is kind of counterclockwise screw that in, mm -hmm. while the transverse abdominus directly impacts the stability of the SI joint. And so the question is, how do you actually stabilize well, the SI joint? Yeah, and what they did is they talked about what they did, they used the EMGs, which is great. Yeah, with you ultrasound. Know, with ultrasound and they could actually see what uh, muscles they were activating, but also they could look at it and really uh, detail it out, which I enjoyed. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. So, and then they started talking about uh, brace patterns. Because if most mm -hmm. of the time, I was taught, if you're gonna brace, just act like somebody's gonna hit you in the belly. Yeah. Right? I always told my patients, hey, the same actual description. Mm -hmm. Act as if somebody's gonna karate chop you here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and then this is even easier. Yeah, I mean, they even looked at that bracing. Yep. And they said, what happens when you brace? And they realized when we actually brace in that same form, somebody's going to punch me, we're actually sh activating the erector spinae mm -hmm. and the obliques mm -hmm. more than the actual transverse abdominis. So if, there, if you have someone doing that exercise and their SI joint's not getting better... You may want to look at the other maneuver, which is what they call the draw-in method. Okay. So what what is that what does that consist of? How do you yeah. do that? So that drawn method really, and they talk about the gravitational load on the transverse abdominus with the mm -hmm. SI joint. Mm -hmm. And so when I understand that, in my opinion, it means you could start off by having the patient seated. Yeah, absolutely. Seated every hour on the hour. Okay. And the idea is all they're trying to do is draw in the abdominal structures. Okay. You're not trying to flex yourself over. No. You're not trying to suck yourself in because you want to be able to maintain normal breathing mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to tuck the abdominal walls into your 
insides, if you want to call it that way. Yeah, exactly. So I wonder if we can show everybody that. Yeah, I think we can walk through sitting. Okay. Supine, and they actually in the study they did it prone. Well, let's, why don't we go through all three, especially if we have a patient who we start out seated, they're not doing better, then we have other things that we can fall back on. We can just go through all three of them, seated, prone, and then supine, and really look at how you could utilize this as a precursor to the other rehab that you're going to give, whether it's glue bridges, side lying, whatever your rehab might be, this will be a good precursor if yep. you're trying to stabilize the transverse abdominal. Especially if you're, if they've got a hip, which we're going to be talking about later in another video, they could have hip problem, but it's really coming from an SI. So you may be able to, to get two birds yeah. in one stone. Okay. okay. So let's take a look at some of those exercises. Um, and, and really what they did find just kind of the, the precursor as to why this might be valuable for those patients is they found as you strengthen that transverse abdominus in these ways, mm -hmm. it stabilized the SI joint pretty effectively. Perfect. And that's what we want. Yeah. Let's take a look. All right. So transverse abdominus in the seated position. The focus here is really helping the patient locate those nice little two bones on the front of their hip, the ASIS, as we know on the clinical side. And what they're going to do is they're going to find that landmark and they're going to be instructed to draw in the abdominal wall. So you're going to try to bring your abdominal wall in side. Okay. okay. Yep. If you feel like, hey, I can't catch my breath, we're doing it wrong. Okay. So you want to make sure you can maintain normal breathing with this exercise. It's going to feel like your pelvis rolls back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's going to feel like, hey, if I hold this any longer, I'm going to get a cramp in my abdominal structures. You're going to hold that for about two, three, five seconds, determined by your provider. And you're going to relax and do two sets of those. You can do those every hour on the hour that you're awake. And you'll be able to start to notice that SI joint stabilizes a little bit more. Perfect. So real simple in the seated position drawing everything in. They should feel a pelvic roll or posterior pelvic tilt in order to get that done correctly with normal breathing, simple exercise. All right, so we just covered how to do the transverse abdominus in the seated position. We're now going to transition in how to do it in the supine position, the face-up position. This is a phenomenal precursor to whatever other exercise you're going to do, whether you're doing a glute bridge, a single leg bridge, or you're doing a clam exercise. This is a simple way for them to do it. So you're going to have the patient, you'll help them identify once again that bony area, going to press on the ASIS on both sides. So if you'll press on both of them. And sometimes if you want to help the patient for tactile feedback or what they call biofeedback, you can actually have the patient locate in the midline and just a little bit inferior to belt line, they're going to be able to palpate those structures. And so as they hold there, now you're going to draw everything in and you're going to feel your pelvis rotate back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And some patients will feel those muscles just peek up into their finger as they palpate that. Simple little bit of feedback for them. Once again, hold two to three seconds or two to five seconds, whatever's comfortable for you in that prescription, and relax. A good two minute rest in between two or three sets would be adequate. And if we want to transition this into a prone position, maybe as a beginning part, you can have the patient roll over into a prone position. It's a little bit more challenging, but sometimes it's a little bit easier for the patient because they can feel their stomach wall coming away from the floor. So you're going to have the patient do the same thing. Draw in, making sure that they don't fully just squeeze at the glutes. We want to make sure that they're actually relaxed in the pelvis and they're getting a posterior pelvic tilt and they're drawing in from the abdominal wall on that floor. And they should feel a separation down below. Same thing. They're going to hold for a given amount of time and relax. Two to three sets, good two minute rest in between, and they can do this every hour on the hour for those, especially with the SI joint instability or laxity. In summary, yep. you have somebody with a troubling SI joint problem, mm -hmm. um, or you're trying to find a little bit pelvic floor stability. Yes. It may behoove you to look at strengthening or activating the transverse abdominus. And in summary, mm -hmm. One of the nice takeaways, when I see this and I understand it, I immediately figure out how can I put that in my tool bag of patient care. Yes. And, and, and in the article, they talk about this m really method of stabilizing the transverse abdominus and SI joint lowers the recurrence rate. Um, anytime I see I can lower the recurrence rate for a patient, I try to pay attention to it. Well, that's, that's honestly what we're supposed to do. Yeah. We don't want to adopt people. We want to get you fixed and let you enjoy your life. I would agree. Absolutely. I, I like it. Any big takeaways on your end? Well, the, 
once again, if an article has a box with key points in it, okay. I love it. Okay. So one of the big key points um, that they talk about is, once again, it should incorporate precise, controlled yeah. exercises for the transverse abdominis. Um, and it should talk about that it's going to decrease the laxity in the SI joint. Yep. That's the main thing. Yeah. So it goes for those people who, you know, um, I know I adjusted people and it was the yeah. same SI joint all the time. Or if you're a PT candidate and it's not getting any better or you're an athlete and it's always that or, or you're a runner, you know, maybe you could uh, incorporate this little exercise and then it will may help uh, make you better. Yeah, at least add it into what you're currently doing. Yes. To, to try to strengthen it. Absolutely. Um, great summary. Excited to oh. apply these to, to those troubling patients with mm -hmm. SI joint problems. Uh, once again, if you want to take a look at the article yep. that we just uh, were able to reference, you can take a look at that mm -hmm. below. Link below. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing See you, you next time on Research Friday. Research Friday.